Good morning all. Uh, my 8-bit breadboard computer uh, generated a little bit of interest, uh, quite a few comments. A lot of them were, is it Turing complete? Well, to answer that, I had to read the article on Turing completeness. And it probably isn't Turing complete because you can't, at the moment, uh, write to the program counter. So what I was thinking of doing is implementing a program counter over here as a peripheral connected to the data bus. You can write to it so that you can do unconditional jumps. You can write a completely new address location. The, out the output of that latch would be fed back to the address lines of the RAM so that you can jump around within the RAM's addresses at will. But I also want a little bit of hardware where the program counter can just increment and I thought of doing that as a simple uh, add one. So it'd be a very crude adder, which just adds one, because I can't really find a, a counter chip that does everything I want uh, it to do. So making this more of a universal computer, a Turing complete computer, rather than just a sort of sequenced processor, because at the moment all it does is it runs through a set of instructions in memory and uses these processing elements to do computations, logical arithmetic and that sort of stuff, assuming we add more of these peripherals, that is. Um, another question that came up quite a lot is, can we have the schematic? Well, you could, but it doesn't really, it's not, it's not complete yet. I mean, I haven't shown you a finished product as such yet. This is still very much a work in progress and it's going to change and it's going to change a lot. So there's probably not much point providing a schematic yet. And there are things I want to do. For example, these LS374, uh, latches, 8-bit latches, are a mess because you've got inputs and outputs on both sides and they're really jumbled up. So I want to switch to the 574 which has all the inputs on one side, all the outputs on the other, they're all uh, neatly lined up in in the right uh, sequence. Um, but you can't get them in LS very easily. You can get them in HC but uh, HCT would have been good because that's TTL compatible inputs and CMOS outputs of course will drive TTL so they would have you can mix and match HCT with LS, uh, but you can't get them in HCT very well either. So it's going to have to be HC, which means making the peripheral section of this computer completely CMOS and using HC devices. You can get HC uh, 574s quite easily, even Alice has HC 574. So that needs to be done. And then it will be visibly much easier to understand what's going on because the data bus will all be on one side and the peripheral outputs will all be on the other side. Um, another thing I want to do is I want to tidy up this um, LED situation. So here, for example, where I've got eight LEDs and they don't fit in the space, so they're all splayed out. Um, I want to use these little LED bars. Now, you can't get them in 8-bit very easily, but you can get them very easily in 10-bit, uh, presumably for use with the LM3914, LM3915 VU meter. Uh, which drives 10 LEDs. However, um, we were talking... Now, who was it? Right, okay, YouTube comments <laughs> proving to be unsearchable again, but I'm pretty sure it was Paul Sampson who said, uh, wouldn't it be handy if we could have uh, SIL LEDs, so a single in-line run of eight LEDs. Well, these bars of 10 LEDs, um, if I don't use two of the LEDs, then I've got eight LEDs, but I've also got pin nine, or the ninth pin, and if I stick underneath an LED bar graph, uh, a SIL resistor pack, and put its common pin to pin nine on the LED bar graph, then effectively I've got a single inline LED. So I'm gonna build some of those uh, so I can make the uh, eight-way LEDs, both here for the output of the data of the RAM and also on the address lines going into the RAM. Fortunately on this RAM, let's get my pencil, um, eight of the address lines are in a row here on this leading edge in sequence with A7 there and A0 there. So that will be an, a good place to put uh, an LED 8-bit uh, bar. Now, there are also one or two issues I want to resolve. Um, right over here at the clock where I've got this uh, switchable with this little slide switch, uh, single step and free running oscillator, uh, something weird was happening here when I left a capacitor in uh, between between pins one and two, even a very tiny capacitor of 220 puff, um, I was just getting jumps and glitches and it wouldn't single step reliably and I couldn't quite understand why. So I'm going to 
do an analysis of this part, which is just literally the switch and the 555. I'll probably keep the counter there and some LEDs so that we can see the count because that actually is a very good way of seeing if you're getting contact bounce because if it doesn't count to the next count, it, it kind of jumps two or jumps three, you know that there's an issue. Uh, so I'll probably look at that 555 circuit in a video on its own and I'll do that with uh, a full schematic of what I've done there. So I'll kind of introduce schematics of uh, various bits of this as I go along in various other videos. But uh, it works well and I think it's worth uh, pursuing this and taking it to the next level so I'm definitely not uh, abandoning this one yet. Actually one of the biggest problems I had with this was power. It just seems that a single point of contact between a wire and the bus bars just isn't good enough. So I had to make up these little triple uh, headers so that you can uh, get three points of contact. Better put that in the right hole. Okay, that's uh, lost my program, but it's easy to restore that. I'm going to go for uh, one, one, so read one and write one. Just fill the memory with that. Hold that down. Uh, okay, we've also lost the data that was in there, so although that's rotating, uh, you can't see it rotating because all the bits are high. Actually, of course, there's a quick fix for this, isn't there? Uh, read zero, write one will pull in this, the constant that's in this uh, buffer. So I just blip that in on one instruction and away we go. But uh, thanks to everyone who left comments on the uh, video for this. Uh, I did enjoy reading them, even the silly ones and the very negative ones. You know who you are. Uh, so almost certainly the next time I come and look at this uh, project again, I'll start right on the left hand side with the uh, single step and or no just or single step or free running uh, 555 oscillator but for the moment that's the update cheerio